Hello everybody, welcome to our Workshop Wednesday. Today we're going to have a look at scroll saws again. We've got a, a puzzle for you today, um, you know, really suited for, for the scroll saw. We've got loads of little tight curves, lots of quick changes of direction, and that's really where the scroll saw comes into its own. To cut these little teeth and little hooks and loops, so they all kind of mesh in together. That's really, you know, the, the strong selling points of these machines is that you can practically spin this on a pinhead. Okay, so I'm talking about our project and the way it rotates on the, on the, um, on the table of the scroll saw here. So we've chosen a puzzle out of our animal puzzle book. Um, really nice little projects in here. There, there's all sorts of different puzzles to look at. Um, from really simple ones to really quite advanced. So a, a nice little book that and some really helpful patterns to, to be able to just print those off or photocopy them and to stick them straight onto a, a piece of wood, you know, away you go. Now, before we stick this down, just something we need to make note of. On all of these um, puzzles, there'll be uh, a little arrow here which is gonna give us our grain direction. And when we're talking about the grain, we're talking about the lines on our piece of timber here. Okay, and that can be quite important. So when we offer this, um, this is a bison we're going to do today. When we offer that up, we're going to keep that strength. The, the grain's going to run through the, the potentially very fragile areas as the tail and some of the legs. If the grain was running this way, we're going to be very short grained in that area and you know potentially it could be um, a, a lot more fragile so we'll, we'll pay attention to our grain direction we can trim this down and we're going to stick it onto our project or our, our blank so let me just grab a pair of scissors we're going to roughly chop this out now we know which way we're orientating it onto the um, onto the blank so let's just get rid of some of this excess we don't want to stick the whole thing down onto the piece of timber because we're just going to use more glue, make more mess and take more time. So, let's get rid of that. We're going to use our copy dex glue again just to glue this down and we're going to put that onto the back of our template, our paper template, as a quick and easy fix to stick this down. So we want a nice thin layer of this one. Like I've said before, this is a, a silicon glue. This is really going to hold together when we try and take this back off of the, um, the workpiece. Um, and it's not going to be absorbed by by the timber, the, the porous wood. Okay. Uh, PVA will just get sucked straight in and you'll have a real hard time um, getting that back off. That's exactly what it's designed to do is to be pulled into the timber to strengthen that glue line. But this one is more for your kind of crafty jobs. So a nice thin layer of that on the back and we're just going to plonk that down onto our piece of timber. Now this is a piece of tulip. We're very lucky, we've got the workshops here, we've got planar thicknesses, we've got um, all the saws we might need to be able to process this uh, piece of tulip. Um, but for the home user, an easy, quick and easy blank to pick up would be something like a breadboard. Uh, a beach breadboard is going to be a nice generous thickness to make one of these chunky puzzles. And I prefer these chunky. I like them with a bit of thickness on, on them so they can stand up on the mantle or you know on the, the kids shelves wherever it's going. Um, it's nice to have it freestanding rather than just a floor puzzle or something like that. To be able to stand it up to really show off 
um, your workpiece. It's it's a nice thing. So we've kept the thickness on this um, on these timbers. Okay, so our first job really is just to cut round this outline. Okay, so I've got in here um, a, a number uh, seven, I think that is a, a number seven um, modified geometry blade, and that's going to allow us to whiz around this quite quickly um, without you know worrying too much. It's, it's a little bit of a stronger blade, and we can increase our feed rate. And, um, and cut this out fairly quickly. So, I've put my goggles on. I'm just checking where we are in relation to this um, hold down clamp. We want to be able to freely move around that blade without catching the bottom of that foot. Um, there is an order to which we were going to work. Um, this piece here is going to come off first once we've cut the outline because if we see this little junction here where the three lines meet or the three pieces meet I should say one of them is a constant line that comes right the way through the other two come up to meet that line so we want to take this piece away um, so when we cut here we're not going to overshoot that and cut into this this hind leg on the back. Okay. So, the machine is going on. Making sure the workpiece isn't touching on the blade there. Let's turn the machine on. And let's just start with our cut. I think I'm going to come in along his back here along the line there. Bringing the blade up to meet that line and pressure down onto the workpiece. So we're holding it onto the, the table of the scroll saw and using that blade as a pivot point. to keep on our line there. I've been a bit stingy with the glue in that section so you can see I'm just going to put my finger on top to hold that down. Just following this line. Now take your time with this. I'm working quite quickly because I've got that that nice strong blade in there giving me the confidence to be able to push this material through there so a little bit quicker. to rotate and spin on the table. And have these spin blades on a scroll saw really allow us to come through or around such tight curves. So 
So I'm just catching on something on the back edge of the table there. I'm resting on the back of the blade now to bring that blade into that little nook. down on the exit of that cup. You can hear it once it's cleared the cup and away we go. Back round onto these legs. Now this is quite a strict section of the cup. But you'll see, you have to make constant micro adjustments to stay on our line, even though it's straight. Now there's something I just want to show you here. I'll just lift that guard so it's a little bit clearer. We're going to come to this little V in a moment. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to come up to that point there and we're going to stop. I'm going to reverse back a touch and then I'm going to cut into this waste. So this area here is all waste. So I'm going to cut into that and then I'm going to use the back of the blade. There's no teeth on the back of this blade. So we can rest that against this piece and we can swing the project round and then reverse that, um, the back of the blade up into that area there where we can start the cut again. I'll show you that in practice. So up to our RB or the bottom of that B and then we're going to bring it back up the cut line. We're going to cut into the waist, not far, and then we're going to reverse our blade and rest our blade on the back of our piece we had already cut. And then we can adjust where, uh, the direction to where we want to be cutting, and then we can start our cut from there. detailed little cut lines here now so we're just going to swing the project around and then I'm going to use the back of the blade again to rest on and bring that in
We've come off our line of touch, but let's slowly bring that back onto the line. We'll try that little technique again where we reverse the blade back to that point. Zigzag, a little chicane around that line there. Come back at that. So I'm feeding it onto the blade while twisting the project or rotating the project. Okay, so that's our outline cut. This should just come free of our um, workpiece now. We've got our, our bison and we can see he's gonna stand nice and flat on the table there. Now, that number seven was good. It's given us a nice finish on the, on the, um, on the workpiece. We've got none of that breakout along the back. That's the great thing about these uh, modified geometry blades is it's gonna save you a lot of time on, on clean up and things like that. Um, so quite a fast free cutting blade, um, but it's gonna be a bit too big um, to cut these pieces. Okay, when we put our puzzle together, we don't want them too, too sloppy. Okay, and the bigger the blade, 
the more clearance it will cut on its way round and it in, in turn will make that a little bit too loose. Um, we have got a nice, um, a nice thick piece of material um, so it will mesh together um, and you can see this big um, along his back here that's going to hold all of it um, you know keep it keep it together um, but we want these puzzle pieces just to be a little bit more refined than the the outside edge there so it's a quick change of the blade remember we're going to keep one finger on top here we're going to sorry we're going to just take some of the tension off finger on top to stop that just from springing up and we can open this little clamp here. I'm going to push this hold down clamp up out of the way. Just pop out this insert plate. You can do it with that still in situ but it just makes it difficult to see. The um, little allen key or T key here going underneath just to undo that clamp there and out comes the blade. I've got my number three uh, ready here and hopefully I mean it's quite difficult on camera I think but you can see that that's the number seven that's come out and that's the three that's going in. You can see that this one's just a bit thinner a little bit more refined. So, bottom clamp first, that's going into, into there. And this can be a little bit fiddly, but um, unfortunately as scrollers, it's something you've got to get used to through changing blades often, potentially blade snapping. Um, but through repetition, it makes the job a whole lot easier. You just get used to where things are, the order in which they go back together. And it shouldn't really take you more than a minute or two. And worth it for the results you're gonna get on these um, puzzle pieces. Table insert back in and then we can drop our clamp, hold down clamp and blower assembly right down to our workpiece. Remember just to swing that around we need to apply our tension again That's nice and tight. Just make sure we do these clamps top and bottom up nice and tight as well um, to really grab them. Otherwise sometimes when we pop our tension back on, it's just gonna let go. So remember we're gonna take this hind leg off first because we've got that constant cut all the way around. So work piece back on the table. Just gonna bring that up a touch. He's just touching onto the little project and swing that around. That feels good and, and nice and free to move. Here we go. Start cutting our pieces. So I'm gonna come in from the top here. in our grip because I've not got much to hold on to now down this end. Slowly feeding onto the blade and rotating this workpiece.
360 and all the way back again. So you can see just how much you have to rotate these, these puzzles. And that's why they're such good practice. They force you to really rotate the work piece because of the nature of that, that tooth on each puzzle piece. just something I wanted to show you. You can see in two spots here I've ever so slightly drifted off our line but that's not going to matter as long as we've got this kind of double return here and our piece is going to grip then we're good. If that line was to come off like this and we've missed this part of the tooth out then certainly it might mean that the, the puzzle piece might come apart but I think we've got away with that one. Let's pop that to one side. And carry on around here. And I'm looking for any um, constant lines. I think I'm gonna take this back piece off next because we've got a nice consistent line coming right the way along here. Um, so we'll do that one next. And then it's just a matter of cutting each segment off as we go. So, back on with our machine, and I'm going to start the tricky end first. as you've got not much to hold on to especially with this kind of clamp um, and garden set up
noise is coming from the workpiece just hitting onto the bed or the table of the scroll saw. We don't want to put too much forward pressure on and suddenly the, the project slides forward. Okay, now we can take this piece off. It's pretty much plain, plain sailing from here. We can come through each one of these lines without cutting into that top piece. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four more cuts to make and then we can start playing with our puzzle. assembly. Just going to check my tension there because it just feels as though the blade is traveling a little side to side um, and you know there's quite often a lot of vibration in these machines um, this one's pretty tidy but um, it's just the nature of the beast really you have like little vibration sometimes you do have to recheck the tensioning Make sure that blade's nice and tight and it's cutting where you want it to. As we keep taking pieces away, we keep subtracting from the size of this. Puzzle, what we've got left to hold on to. So it may be that you need to go back and grab a piece, put it back on. Just 
to give you that little bit more to hold on to. A little bit of leverage or a little bit more leeway to swing these projects around. Again, nice and slow on that exit. Let's take that piece off. Two more cuts to go. just that little detail in there we've just cut and you'll see that's not quite normal for a puzzle but we've got an interlocking piece here which forms part of the horn on this bison which is going to hold that together usually we have this exaggerated tooth with these two rounded sections so when I was cutting that I thought oh dear but actually this top bit is going to really lock it in um, this glue we're just gonna kind of roll off the piece of paper let's just separate them and you can see that none of that is penetrated onto the wood surface it's all left on the back of our piece of paper here and always apply the glue to the paper rather than the timber you'll end up with a better finish and an easier clean up that way We've got that little eye there. I'm just going to drill that hole while we've still got a reference point to it. Um, I've got a, um, a brad point on here, so a lip and spur drill bit. So we've got that nice fine point which is going to allow me to just locate right in the centre of that eyeball there. So I'm not... Um, sorry, let me just get that there. Not going in very far, just really scoring the surface uh, before we remove that reference to it. Okay, so 
there comes off the rest of our template. Now, here's the tricky part, to put it all back together again. <laughs> so, could we be able to come round onto the, the table here, uh, Craig? Craig's very kindly pulling off paper as we were, um, we were finishing those last bits of the puzzle. So, let's see if we can remember the way it goes back together. We got a bit of a visual clue with the colour, and this is a nice dark piece of um, for for tulip. Anyway, usually it's that kind of that white colour, but it's given me a, a visual clue as to where the bits are going together. Um, but really suits this this little bison project. And there we go. And that's our bison, and like we were saying before, he will stand up freely. We can pop him up on our scroll saw here. A nice little project. Um, and like I say, really good practice these, these puzzles. Um, you know, try a few different shapes. I've not done this one before, so I thought I'd give the bison a go today. Um, he'll stand up on his legs like that. Um, a nice little fun project. Um, great thing, great practice, um, and you know they look really nice in little families as well. So you can print them off different sizes, uh, things like that. Um, it, it's, a, it's a good way to get you into scrolling, and it's a nice focus project as well. It's um, you know you can you've you've got the templates in the books, and they're easy to print off, easy to stick on, and get going straight away. If you're looking for, for um, nice little um, uh, blanks and things like that, like I say, you can pick up beach um, breadboards and, and things like that. Um, so, you know, it, it's a really easy way to get into, into scrolling. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed your, um, this, this Wednesday afternoon. Next week we're going to be looking at, um, at something a little bit different. We're going to look at a 3D project next week. Um, we're going to be doing something like this. Um, so that's a 3D cut on the scroll saw. Um, we cut that in two planes. So we'll cut it from one side and then another side. But we've got a little surprise for you. Something nice and seasonal. And so join us back here um, next Wednesday for our, our Workshop Wednesday. Thanks a lot. <laughs>